Hey, Kate, how are you doing today? I'm good, Drew. How are you? I'm doing great, man. I'm super excited. Next week, not this week, but next week is our next meetup, and I am stoked, man. Super stoked. Likewise. Yeah, I've been I've been inviting people like crazy, so I think it'll be a good turnout. Absolutely, absolutely. And dude, just like the follow-up game that I've had post the last one, just talking to people, they all enjoy it. And I've, you know, been building these relationships, kind of like we talked about a couple of videos ago, you know, just like following up, making sure that you're building on those relationships that get started in NGR. And it's been super valuable and super impactful. So for sure. For sure. Absolutely. Well, sweet man. Well, Cade, fill us in what's going on in the uh, in the housing markets, what you got. Yeah, so this week we're highlighting Saudita specifically um, and wanted to briefly go over the month supply, also known as the absorption rate. Okay, and this is the supply of homes on the market and basically how long it takes for a home to sell. Okay, so just a quick recap, zero to one month, that's going to be your seller's market if uh, month supply. Um one month to two months, that's going to be a buyer's or seller's market. So it really just depends on the home itself. And then anything two months supply and above, you are now in a buyer's market. Okay. So that's how we kind of gauge where we're at. Right now in Saudi, the February 2023 analytics just came out um, and we hit 2.1 month supply in Saudi. Um, so again, just kind of, you know, reestablishing the fact that we are now in a buyer's market. The data is showing it the past few weeks we've been leading up to that, but it never got above the two. Um, since last year in May of 2022 to January of 2023 this year, every month there's been an increase of a, of a 0.10% for a month supply. So in May of 22, uh, we had 1.1 month supply. January, 2023, we had 1.9 month supply. Um, so every month it was a 0.10%. Now from January, 2023 to February, 2023, we went from 1.9 to 2.1. So we went from a 0.10 to a 0.20th, right? So 20% increase in month supply um, just from one month starting this year. So again, just, we really want to encourage that if you're a buyer on the fence right now, right now is the time to get in because not only are we seeing much more increase in inventory, but we are also seeing that, hey, these homes are sitting on the market a lot longer. And so you as a buyer have a much more um, incentive to really come into some of these homes and negotiate really favorable terms um, because the seller needs to sell it, right? Um, so my call to action today is that anyone who is a buyer in the Saudi the market, or maybe you're thinking about buying, um, you actually can qualify for a USDA loan, which is not applicable in like Tucson or some of the bigger cities because they're just too massive. Um, so basically a USDA loan allows you to put 0% down on a house. So if you're a buyer, maybe you're renting, right? We deal with a lot of tenants who end up purchasing a home. A lot of them don't have a lot of cash for, you know, 20% down payment. So instead, if you're in Saudita, you can actually use a USDA loan. It's 0% down. And not only that, but if you're, you know, negotiating on a home that's well above the two month mark, um, as far as days on market, you can get those seller concessions to then buy down your interest rate to help with closing costs. So you can really um, get favorable terms, not only on your loan, but your upfront costs here in Saudi because of that USDA program. That's amazing. And so it's a loan program. And is it is it a form of down payment assistance or is the entirety of the home then just wrapped in the loan? Like talk me through that. Yeah, so it's an actual loan product. It's not necessarily, okay. I mean, it is a program, but it's a product. So you can get a USDA loan. Um, and it's has similar guidelines to FHA, being that it's backed by HUD, um, the Housing of Urban Development. So um, kind of has same guidelines as FHA. Um, so you have to qualify for it, obviously, um, but it allows you to put 0% down uh, for the down payment. So the loan will actually fund your whole purchase. Um, as far as closing costs are concerned, that's something that you as a buyer would have to have cash for. Um, so, you know, your, um, you know, title fees and, and things like that. But if you can get concessions right now in the current market, which is, you know, really popular, then you can use that for your closing costs. And then you can really come into something um, completely out of pocket. 
That's amazing. And do you have to be a first time home buyer or can this be an investment property that you buy this program through? So it has to be an owner occupied property. Okay. So, so it could be multifamily theoretically. Um, I would have to double check on that. I'm not completely sure. Um, I can tell you that here in Sawanitha, there's pretty much no multifamily. Um, so that wouldn't even be a concern. Um, however, I'm not sure. Um, I think it would apply similar to FHA. Um, so yeah, 0% down, uh, no multifamily here in Saudita, So that wouldn't be a concern. Um, but yeah, like I said, if you can find a property that, you know, it's been sitting on the market a while, you can get favorable terms and get the seller to pay for it while using the USD, USDA loan, you could be completely out of pocket closing on the house. So it's, it's pretty awesome. I love that. I love that. That's amazing, man. Yeah. So Absolutely. Drew, tell us, yeah, tell us about your update and, and the mar the market. Absolutely. Yeah. So S&P 500 is up last week, about 1.2% and up year to date, about 3%. Dow Jones is about up 0.3-ish percent, still down about 3% for the year. And then the Russell 2000 is was up last week, 1%, and it's still down about 0.3% for the year. Uh, so again, we saw a lot of those gains that we had at the beginning of the year get forfeited. And I think a lot of it has to do with uncertainty and specifically around the term, the recession, right? So most people, unfortunately, they assume and they correlate that a recession equals a housing crisis. And the biggest thing that I want to hit on is that's not true. They might be paired together at certain times. We saw it in 08, but that's not directly a correlation. It's more of a causal and effect based upon different things. Now, you also have this whole banking system that's going on. And I want to hit on the point that banking system isn't weak right now. There's a few banks that have had some issues, right? There's been four that I know of so far that have declared for bankruptcy or gone under. Two of them have been bailed out by the federal government. The other two have been bailed out by the actual big five banks, so I want to, that goes to say that you shouldn't stress if you've got your money in JP Morgan or Bank of America, you shouldn't really stress about the money that you have. If you're in a more local bank, I mean, keep your eyes. But again, the mistrust in the banking system is not a flawed statistic. It was all based on lending practices that were taken and actual deposit practices that were taken by these individual banks that put them in the situation that they're in. However, I do want to hit on the fact that we are technically in a recession. Most people will kind of dance around that term and they won't really say it. And they'll say, you know, when we get into a recession and we think we're going to be in a recession, like, no, textbook definition, we are in a recession. That's two consecutive negative quarters of GDP growth. We have hit two. We're going, we are almost through with our third and could possibly going into our fourth. And so making sure that, you know, you understand that we are in that and textbook wise that we are. And the reason why people are sort of dancing around that is because again, unemployment, housing and banks, banks are healthy. Housing is healthy because lots of people are either really in deep. They have a lot of equity in their home or they refinance and they're at the lowest interest rate that they'll ever see in their life. And so they're not going to want to risk losing that asset. But the unemployment number is super skewed. And I think that that's the tell all, right? People are holding on to that. Well, unemployment's at an all-time low and we see help signs. Reason being is unemployment only takes into account people that are applying for jobs. So if you're not applying for jobs, you're not deemed as unemployed because you're not looking. And so a lot of people are living off government benefits or they were in their you know, near retirement age and they were forced into retirement because of COVID and now they're just not willing to get back into the job force. Those two numbers represent a lot of people. And so it looks like in the working class and what we're looking for in terms of unemployment, it looks like that number is really low. But in reality, there's going to be, I think, a mass amount of people that are going to be flooding the job market here soon when the government benefits truly, truly come to an end. And I think that that has a lot to do with legislation changes that possibly could happen. I mean, I've seen some things that Jerome Powell, the Federal Reserve chairman, is, is kind of 
getting some heat based upon what he's been saying. And so I think that that has a lot to do with where we'll see the economy in the future. And I don't think we're out of the recession. The typical average recession is eight to 12 months. We're probably about halfway through if I had to make my guess. We haven't hit that bottom marker yet. So that would be that would be where I think we stand now. Just keep on with your plans. If you're investing, keep investing. There's great deals in the market. Obviously, with seller concessions and what you're saying, it's it's a good time to buy a house. Like keep your practices. And if you're making money, you have disposable income, keep those good habits in play. But just kind of be weary and build up those emergency savings accounts just in case. Yeah, no, that's really good. Yeah, I think it's important that, you know, as, uh, you know, everyday consumer and citizen, you know, that you stay alert of what's happening. uh, But at the same time, don't let the fear of something, you know, drive your decision. So um, ultimately, if you're investing something that you, Drew, and I both preach and believe in is never invest in a hypothetical right? Never. Like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm planning that the market's going to crash and blah, blah, blah. You know, what if that never happens? And then that's why you see uh, a ton of people who never own a home because they were always waiting for the best time in the market. And it's just, it doesn't happen. So um, if it makes financial sense and you can make money, pull the trigger, hold, right? Drew, you and I, right? We have the privilege of being young. So everything that we're investing now can only grow over time. Right. And so this asset for sure. So Drew, do you want to finish us off with um, a quote? Yeah. And I was going to say a quote, but I'm going to change it up. And I might have said it here before, but I'm going to say it again. It's a good old Warren Buffett quote. And it was reminded to me based upon what you just said. And that is be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. And right now, everybody's fearful, everyone's uncertainty. So if you've got a long time plan, a long time play in the market, I mean, right. take advantage of what we got. Right. And I'll, I'll quickly keep this going on because I just, I enjoy the conversation. Um, right now, if you're looking at investing specifically, you know, I'll take an example for me, you know, I'm looking at buying apartments. And so you have a lot of these owners right now who, um, you know, their, their portfolios are not selling right? They're sitting on the market. They want a price that was, you know, two years ago, and it's just not the case anymore. And so if you can come to some of these sellers and some of these opportunities and deals and say, look, I want to buy, you know, let's, let's figure out how we can make this happen. You know, I am telling you right now, the sellers need to sell, right? That's why they put it on the market. Right? So if they're wanting to sell, they're going to be inclined to kind of hear you out because there's no one else there. So, and that's where you have those amazing opportunities, right? And, you know, five, 10 years from now, you're going to look back at maybe some of those deals or some of those investing choices you made. You're going to say, holy crap, I was the smartest guy ever, you know, but not Mm -hmm. really. You were just, you were just willing to kind of take a risk when everyone, when everyone else was fearful. So um, it also made me think of uh, something. I was watching um, the Hunger Games last night. I just started, well, I watched that because it's on Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Say, so, you know, when president snow, he's talking to the guy, I don't know his name, who's basically the hunger games coordinator and he runs Mm -hmm. it all. And he basically tells him, he says, you know, what's greater than fear is hope, you know? And so he's like, don't let this hunger games thing get out of control. Cause then the people are going to revolt because hope is stronger than fear. Right. And everyone fears the hunger games, right. All the districts. And so all this to say, it kind of correlates to now, right? As far as your investing journey, right? If the hope that you have for your investing career and journey is greater than the fear of the state of the market right now, you will, I mean, hope is greater than fear. So you will, you know, come out stronger on the other side, just because, you know, you, you had, you had hope in your abilities and your investing decisions and the way that you kind of established yourself. So um, all that to say, uh, you know, Go into your investing journey with the idea that you are hopeful for the outcome. Um, Be wise with what you're doing, but ultimately trust the knowledge that you have through the, through the education, right? Absolutely. Um, talk, talk, Talk to people that have, you know, Drew and I network like crazy. And so a lot of our mentors are guys that have been through all these cycles, right? Listen to those guys, right? They've seen it. So, um, a lot of them aren't scared right now, right? They're just kind of you know, chilling. So anyway, that goes for my speech, but everyone who's watching this, you're welcome to come out to our meetup. 
It's going to be the 31st of March on a Friday night, 530 to 830 at the Sands Club at the U of A. Um, like Drew said, we're inviting a ton of people. A lot of people are excited about it. So we hope to see you there. Everyone's invited. I love it. All right, Cade. Well, until uh, next week, you have a great one and uh, we'll, we'll see you next week. Sounds good, brother. Talk soon.